Well, hello there, friends. You're listening to Mastering the Task Exam with me, Mr. A. Tesconi. Today's task science lesson is plant and animal cell processes. Here's a test tip when taking the task exam. Don't wait to the last minute to study. It's important to review materials you've acquired from your class, along with watching these short videos each day. Practice makes perfect and passing the task exam takes what? You guessed it, practice. And to all you note takers out there, feel free to pause each slide and write down information to study. On that note, let's do this. So believe it or not, plants and humans actually have a lot in common. We both have cells. We both need energy. We both love to cook. W wait, what? That's right. I said it. Plants love to cook. So the first thing you need in order to cook is a kitchen. A plant has just that. The plant uses its kitchen to make its own food. Organisms that make their own food from within are called autotrophs. Of course, a plant's kitchen doesn't look like the kitchen on the right. A plant's kitchen looks more like a throwback from the 1970s. It's so green. This green little kitchen is called a chloroplast. Now, just like when you make a cake, you need a recipe with the basic ingredients required, like flour, sugar, eggs, and butter. Well, this is what a plant's recipe looks like when it makes food. The three ingredients that a plant needs to make its own food include sunlight, carbon dioxide, also known as CO2, and water, good old H2O. It's the first part of the equation on the left. Ingredients are called inputs in science, which means something is being added. The process by which a plant makes its food is called photosynthesis. Now, the first ingredient is sunlight. On a science test, if you ever see a question refer to the ultimate source of energy on Earth, the answer will be the sun. Time to collect the first ingredient. Inside these little plant kitchens, chloroplasts, is a pretty green pigment known as chlorophyll. This is what gives a plant its green color. In the first part of the cooking process, the chlorophyll inside a chloroplast gets excited to see the sunlight and starts collecting just the right amount of light it needs. A plant doesn't believe in wasting anything, so it reflects, which is also known as giving back, the parts of light not required for photosynthesis. Now the plant needs the other two key ingredients. The second ingredient needed is CO2, carbon dioxide. We help supply carbon dioxide when we breathe out. The carbon dioxide is collected in tiny pores of a plant's leaves, known as stomas, which is plural for stomata. You say potato, and I say patata. Stoma, stomata. Okay, not exactly the same, but you get the point. The third ingredient needed for photosynthesis is water, H2O. A plant acquires the water needed for photosynthesis with the help of its trusty root system. Now the plant has all three ingredients in its kitchen which is called the chloroplast, that's needed for photosynthesis. Sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. Now the magic happens, thanks to some crazy complex chemical reactions. Uh, this is the part where I'm gonna need you to get out a sheet of paper and copy everything that you see on the right and memorize it for the exam. Just kidding. 
you don't need to worry about any of these details for the task exam. Back to our recipe. There are two things created during photosynthesis. Sugar, also known as glucose, which is represented by C6H12O6, and oxygen, O2. These two things are called outputs, which simply means something that is produced and can be seen at the right side of the equation. Now, plants are very kind and thoughtful. They don't believe in wasting anything. And since they have no use for oxygen that's created in the process of photosynthesis, they're more than happy to release it back to the atmosphere so we can breathe. Oxygen is considered a waste product of photosynthesis. Humans and other animals are classified as heterotrophs. We obtain our food and energy by eating other plants and animals. We have a different process for energy production. Our process of energy production is called cellular respiration, which is a set of metabolic reactions and processes that take place in the cells of organisms to convert biochemical energy from nutrients into adenosine triphosphate, ATP, and then release the waste products. Wait, what? Let's try that again. Cellular respiration happens when organisms eat food, which are cells break down into energy, called ATP, and releases the waste products from the process. Much better. When you start feeling tired and run down, your cells are getting hungry. Let's eat something and see what happens. So our cells need carbohydrates. Bring on the bread, which are classified as organic compounds. These take the shape in the form of starches, sugars, and cellulose. So our cells break down the carbohydrates into sugar, also known as glucose, which is represented by C6, H12, O6, that our cells need, and combine it with oxygen, O2, which can be seen on the left side of the equation. Now, it's trivia time. Are you ready? Which part of a cell does cellular respiration occur? Here's your hint. Power. Remember, cellular respiration supplies energy and power to a cell. Remember the lesson on cell parts? The mitochondria has returned. Remember, might means power. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Guess where cellular respiration takes place? In the mitochondria. Insert some more crazy complex chemical reactions. It's now time to see what's made in cellular respiration. Remember, in photosynthesis, two things are created. Sugar, which the plant uses for energy, and oxygen, a waste product which is released back into the atmosphere. Cellular respiration produces three things, which can be seen on the right side of the equation. These include carbon dioxide, water, and ATP which is energy. Water and carbon dioxide are considered waste products in cellular respiration. And since plants are so kind in giving us oxygen, which is their waste product from photosynthesis, we like to return the favor and release one of our waste products from cellular respiration back into the air. Good old carbon dioxide. We want to make sure plants can keep on doing plant-like things like photosynthesis, which ensures that we can keep on doing our cellular respiration thing. What a beautiful friendship. Plants take in sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide, where the ingredients are mixed in its kitchen, called a chloroplast, and make sugar and oxygen. 
Since the plant only needs the sugar, it releases the oxygen so we can breathe. We then eat plants, or other animals that eat plants, and our cells' mitochondria break down the carbohydrates with the help of oxygen and cellular respiration to make energy, water, and carbon dioxide. We release the carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere where the process starts all over again. It's great to have friends. And speaking of friends, I hope you click the link in the description box and try my Quizlet on this lesson. I'm so happy we can go through this important journey together. Stay safe, friends, and keep on studying. I'd like to thank Chris Matthews for providing the music for this instructional series, to Valerie Jeffers for co-producing, to Marion University and the Blue Umbrella for making the series possible, along with all the other teachers, townships, and adult basic education programs who help inspire adult learners to reach for the stars. Mr. Abe Tascone is the alter ego of me, David Taylor. If you have any questions about the task exam or if you'd like to try some of my quizzes, please email me at tasktestquestions at gmail.com. This has been a Jeffers and Taylor production. See you next time.